I want to help you understand how low intensity steady state cardio burns fat because it's not bad, it's just a little bit slower at burning fat. What I'm going to do is teach you a process of efficiency. Okay? So normally, when we're doing steady state cardio, our bodies are in a very efficient state. It's something called beta oxidation. It's a very efficient form of breaking down fats into energy. But efficiency isn't always what we want when we're trying to burn fat, when you think about it. We don't want the most efficient way to create energy. We kind of want an inefficient way because that causes our bodies to have to adapt and thereby burn more energy and burn more fat and burn more calories and ultimately lose weight and change our bodies. However, beta oxidation and the utilization of fats is a very phenomenal, very interesting thing and it does a lot for our bodies. So let's explain how it actually works so you have a solid understanding of how your body's literally using fats for fuel. So beta oxidation is simply where fatty acids are broken down into the mitochondria and ultimately broken down into coenzyme A, which we can ultimately use for energy. Coenzyme A is the root of creating energy in general. Okay, but let me tell you about how the fatty acids are transported and how this process works, and then it will all make a little bit more sense. So it starts with a fatty acid, a fatty acid molecule that comes from dietary fats or whatever the case may be. These fatty acids conjugate with coenzyme A in what is called the cytosol. Okay? The cytosol is just the aqueous portion of a cell. If you visualize a cell and you look at a diagram of a cell, you'll see that there is a liquidy portion in the center of the cell. That is the cytosol. So what happens is the fatty acid conjugates with coenzyme A there, and it creates something known as fatty acid acyl coenzyme A. This fatty acid acyl coenzyme A is then modified by something that a lot of us know as carnitine. Maybe you've taken an L-carnitine supplement before and you've just believed that it helps you burn more fat. Well, now you'll probably understand how that actually works. The L-carnitine reacts with the fatty acid that's already been conjugated and it carries it into the mitochondria. So that carnitine literally is a transporter to get it into the inner membrane of the mitochondria where we create energy. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell where we create energy. So it goes from being inside a cell in the cytosol crosses through the membrane of the mitochondria to where it can start being utilized for energy. But now we have to understand how that process actually works. So I want you to visualize the fatty acid breakdown like a March Madness bracket or like a sports betting bracket or something like that. So you end up having this long chain fatty acid, this long chain fatty acid that's inside your mitochondria and it starts breaking down. It breaks down through dehydrogenation. So it means that hydrogen molecules are removed. Those hydrogen molecules are removed and water is added in. Then this cleaving process occurs. So you've got this fatty acid that's been modified a little bit and then a portion of it gets cleaved off. The end of the fatty acid gets cleaved off, making a shorter fatty acid. That fatty acid goes to the top of the cycle and starts the process again where hydrogens are removed, water is added, and a portion cleaved off becomes even smaller. And then it goes through the process again until there's nothing left but acetyl coenzyme A. So when I reference it like a sports bracket, it literally is like that. It starts like a total wide funnel at the top, breaks down more, breaks down more, breaks down more until you're left with nothing but acetyl coenzyme A, which is pure energy. And this process is very unique and it obviously involves oxidation where it requires oxygen, it requires dehydrogenase to remove hydrogen. Very complex process, yet it yields a lot of energy. So now I'm going to explain how this works when it comes down to steady state cardio. So, so many people will bag on steady state cardio because they think you're going to burn a lot of muscle and everything like that. Well, the thing is, steady state cardio predominantly uses fats as a source of fuel because as you can tell when I'm explaining this process, it takes a long time to create energy. It's slow. It breaks down fatty acids in a slow way, but it ends up creating over 100 ATP every time it goes through this process. Whereas when we're utilizing carbs as a source of fuel, we're only creating 36 ATP. Now, in case you don't know, ATP is literally just another word for energy. It's adenosine triphosphate. It's basically the root of energy in your body. It is energy, okay? So we create 100 units of energy through beta oxidation from fat, and we create 36 units of energy from ATP through glucose metabolism. So you can start doing the math. You can see, yes, you could potentially burn more fat because you're gonna have to work harder to create more ATP with carbohydrates. With fat as a source of fuel, your body runs efficiently. So that's the caveat. With low intensity cardio, you have a direct line to utilizing fats. You're going to utilize fats, but your body's gonna utilize them a little bit slower. With anaerobic activity, where you use carbs, your body's gonna have to work harder, it's inefficient, it hurts more, 
but you do burn more calories, not necessarily more fat, but more calories because you have to work harder. You have to work three times as hard. So I hope that that makes some sense, but when you look at the big picture, that is how low intensity cardio helps you burn fat. It's not a bad thing, okay? Only if you go to the extreme. I'm always a fan of both high intensity and low intensity, but it all depends on the situation. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I hope that this answers some questions about beta oxidation and how fats are used.